The Suzhou region is south of the Yangtze River and is known as the land of fish and rice. For centuries, canals and waterways were built to link every town and village. In the 6th century, the empress of the Sui dynasty began construction of the Grand Canal to bring the riches of the south to the northern capital of Chang'an. After Beijing became the imperial capital in the 13th century, the Grand Canal was relocated. The great waterways became the lifeline of China, transporting food and goods and military supplies. Market towns multiplied, and the merchants and artisans of Suzhou prospered, supplying silk, tea and other luxuries sought by the rest of the empire. Suzhou's riches even traveled as far as Rome and Persia. Today, the products of the region are still transported along these same waterways. The people of Suzhou like their fish absolutely fresh. In fact, jumping. So every day, fishermen bring their catch from Lake Taihu to local collecting stations. The melodious call of the fish collector sings out the name, the weight, and the price of the catch. The Yangtze Delta is the rice bowl of China and rice is honored and revered as a symbol of the farmer's hard work. In the paddies you can always hear light-hearted banter. It's the farmer's way of easing their back-breaking task. Seedlings are planted in straight rows and lines of string are used as guides.
The women of the region are known for their femininity. They are equally admired for their industriousness. Sometimes they carry water to irrigate hillside orchards. And with apparent ease, they balance the buckets without spilling. Suzhou's finest tea, Bi Luo Chun. Emerald spring is picked before the spring rains when only the first leaf has opened. For different grades of tea are determined by when they are picked. Roasting is done by hand so that the drying process called sweating the tea can be regulated by touch. Implements are not used as they may bruise the leaves. The Chinese character for household evolved from the picture of a roof over a pig. It symbolizes family life derived from the land, a life finely tuned to basic values. This family, like many others in China, have lived on this land for generations. Their house was started by the grandfather, completed by the father, and handed down to the eldest son. A meal on the farm is simple, yet it is prepared with care. Rice is served at every meal. Nothing is wasted. Even drippings from rice are saved to feed the pigs. Every ingredient is selected for its color and texture as well as seasonal availability. They are gathered before cooking to ensure peak freshness. Zongzi is made from sweet rice wrapped in water reeds. It's a festival food eaten on the fifth day of the fifth moon to commemorate a loyal minister of the third century BC. He was falsely accused by corrupt officials and was banished from court. He threw himself in the river to prove his integrity. Since then, people have made Zongzi as an offering on the anniversary of his death.
手速啊。The country kitchen is simple and efficient. The wok is sunken into the earthen stove so that the flame will engulf the entire cooking surface. Fuel is scarce, so leaves and straw are used to feed the fire. Stir frying is a quick method of cooking that uses a burst of high heat to cook this regional dish. Fresh chives with eggs. The traditional values of family unity, respect for the land and its bounty, are shared by the people of the countryside and people in the city. City dwellers have always maintained close ties with their ancestral land because the values of the country were regarded as a source of moral strength. The deep bond between city and country created a constant flow which continues today. Sudro became a center of commerce and wealth by the 13th century. On his journey through Cathay, Marco Polo wrote, Sudro is a great and noble city. The people live by trades and crafts, and they make cloth of gold and silk. I tell you, they are clever, merchants and craftsmen, and they have wise men and scholars. Moreover, there are quite 6,000 bridges of stone in this city. Suzhou is a city crisscrossed with a double system of canals and streets. Almost every house opens onto a street in the front and a canal in the back. At one time, all services and vending were conducted on the canals. But today, the streets have been widened and buses and bicycles outnumber boats. The main street is a favorite place to stroll and gather. It was once lined with food stalls and candy shops. Cai Zhizhai is the most famous sweet shop in town. Here you can treat yourself to candied flowers and fruits of a hundred varieties. Every day fresh confections are made to satisfy the Suzhou fondness for nibbling. As part of its literary and cultural tradition, Suzhou was known for its many book and art shops and people come here to browse. Connoisseurs like to collect miniature rocks, appreciated for their fantastic shapes. The rocks symbolize mountains and the forces of nature. Those with a metallic ring are particularly valued. Embroidery once graced every aspect of daily life. The women of Sudro were adept at the art embellishing apparel with fine stitchery and subtle colors. Today, Suzhou embroidery is made mostly for foreign markets. Some women still work at home, but the patterns and colors are now assigned by the government workshops.
For centuries, silk was a secret closely guarded by the Chinese until it was smuggled to Byzantium in the early Christian era. Legend has it that silkworm eggs were hidden in the headdress of a Chinese princess en route to marry a tribal chieftain. Silk making begins in the spring when sheets of eggs are taken from winter storage to hatch in the warm room. Soon little black worms as thin as human hairs emerge. They are transferred to bamboo trays where they feed on mulberry leaves for a month. Fresh leaves are harvested several times a day to satisfy their voracious appetites. As the worms grow, they will molt four times, finally becoming translucent. Five days later, they climb the mountain of tufted straw. Soon, each worm spins a snowy cocoon of silk. The cocoons are then harvested, boiled, and unraveled in a single filament. Now, weaving of the fabric begins. By the 15th century, the city accumulated great wealth and became a flourishing center of art and culture. Poets, painters, and scholars gathered here, lavishing their creativity on literary pursuits, art collecting, and the building of exquisite gardens. But always there was an emphasis on the essential, not ostentation. The residential streets have white walls and simple doorways. It is not possible to know whether they lead to a humble house or a celebrated garden villa. Doors and windows are like eyes, openings that provide a glimpse, but do not reveal it all. An infinite number of experiences are choreographed into a small space. Each step brings a surprise, the sudden illusion of distance, or the reappearance of an interrupted vista. The creators of these gardens were the literati, or gentlemen scholars, and officials who had retired from power. They aspired to the ideal of the simple life, and they emulated the ways of the farmer and fisherman by cultivating their own gardens. A gathering in these garden retreats was a creative event. Over free-flowing wine, they inspired and challenged each other to play music, to paint, and to compose poems. Storytelling holds a special place in the life of Suzhou, where culture and moral values have long been transmitted in the oral tradition. The story continues day after day, each episode ending with a cliffhanger. Epic tales are recounted by a single storyteller who is able to suggest a cast of hundreds. In this saga, a tournament is about to begin, a contest between heroes and villains. Banners are waving, trumpets blaring, and drums are beating. Song 
标记破报，地狼相约无样位。咦？<笑>
as they readied themselves for their separate lives. Suzhou has weathered countless cycles of change, but the traditional regard for simplicity, continuity, and the essence of life remains unchanged. Sustained by a people who never cease to delight in their own ingenuity and in the most simple joys, Suzhou is more than a place. It is a state of mind, a way of life.